What is up, Andronaut? In this video, we're going to talk about garlic and how it affects your testosterone and exactly what that compound is that is beneficial for increasing testosterone and the exact mechanism how it works. And also, I've done an experiment with garlic and onion to see if it would increase my testosterone. I'm going to share the results with you. Let's dive in. So garlic has been shown to increase testosterone. What they did, and you can guys can fact check my math here, is that they gave these animals 8 grams of garlic powder per kilogram of diet. So they call it the garlic diet. So if we have to do the math, like what the milligram per kilogram is, a rat eats about 17 grams of food per day, between 15 and 20. So I'm just like getting the average of 17, 17 grams. That would equate to about 0.136 grams of garlic per day so if a rat they said the rat was weighing 90 kilograms so it uh, 90 grams which means it's a very small rat like a baby rat so this would mean it was 1.51 milligram per kilogram of body weight this means the human equivalent dose would be 2.24 milligram per kilogram which would be about 24 milligrams for a 100 kilogram guy and the average garlic clove weighs about four grams now if you dehydrate that you get rid of all the liquid and the powderize it is probably going to be around two grams so this does not make sense to me how this dose could be so small and they have gotten this kind of result which is suspicious unless my math is just way off anyway what you can see is that they gave these different groups different levels of casein so it's a 10 percent casein 25 percent casein 40 percent casein diet and regardless of the protein intake testosterone remained more or less the same unless they were given garlic and so when they were given garlic, 10% you can see didn't increase testosterone, 25% increased testosterone, 40% casein, they had the biggest increase in testosterone. I'm going to share with you my hypothesis to exactly why that is. So we know that garlic supplementation can increase testosterone, but is more effective on a high protein diet. And also they did a serendipitous sub study in the study. They found that garlic with lard increased testosterone the most. So this was shortening. Think about margarine or like hydrogenated vegetable oils, like toxic stuff. Wasn't very good for increasing testosterone. Lard better. Garlic with uh, margarine, pretty good at increasing testosterone. And then garlic with lard was the best at increasing testosterone. So obviously if you want to maximize your testosterone, stick to saturated fats and yeah the specific compound that was helpful for increasing testosterone specifically euthanizing hormone was dialyl disulfide it's a sulfur compound found in garlic and the more of this dialyl disulfide they gave these animals like a 10 dose 20 dose and 30 dose the higher lh went like in a dose dependent manner as you can see but what they did is they injected this compound into the right femoral vein over one minute so it's like an infusion like an iv of this compound so again like it bypassed oral absorption because like most of these sulfur compounds and plant compounds the absor the bioavailability is really low and then after it's being absorbed it's going to go to the liver where it's going to be processed and after that it's going to be released in the blood and then it's going to go to the brain through the blood brain barrier so there's a lot of hurdles that you have to overcome when you take something orally when you inject it into the vein it's just going to go straight to the blood brain barrier into the brain and this is why it probably increases LH so effectively versus if you have to take it orally, it's going to be much less potent. But the point is the compound in garlic responsible for increasing LH and testosterone is dialyl disulfide. And then they tested, okay, why is it increasing it? And uh, they speculated that it, this dialyl disulfide was increasing norepinephrine. So dose response of plasma luthanizing hormone concentrations in rats following noradrenaline um, administration. And again, here you can see when they gave these animals a noradrenaline, LH increased massively. So this was vehicle alone. So this is like the placebo group that was not getting noradrenaline. It was 3.9. And then the more noradrenaline they gave these animals, the higher your, the LH went. But you can see it was not a dose-dependent increase because it was 5 nanogram, 10 nanogram, and 50 nanogram. There wasn't a big difference between the 10 and 50 nanogram. So there seems to be like a peak how much noradrenaline you can get. But it seems that the mechanism how this dialyl sulfide or garlic increases luteinizing hormone is by increasing noradrenaline. So the better you can increase noradrenaline, the better you can increase your LH. So if your LH is low, chances are it would be a good idea to focus on boosting your noradrenaline in general. All right, so here are dialyl disulfide sources. We have the allium sources, which is like garlic. So you can get it from garlic oil, garlic powder, crushed garlic, uh, fresh garlic, aged garlic black garlic etc japanese horse radish 
which is wasabi japonica and the black mustard powder and cooked beef. So I was surprised that this dialyl disulfide was found in cooked beef. I thought it was only present in garlic, but it would make sense because beef is a source of sulfur, right? It's got methionine and cysteine, and it seems to have this dialyl sulfide as well. I'm not sure in terms of absolute quantities, but it's possible that the more beef you eat, because you can eat more beef than you can eat garlic. You can eat two pounds of beef, but you cannot eat two pounds of garlic. You're going to die. And so this might be why people that do carnivore or eat a lot of protein, they can have more testosterone than people that do not eat a lot of protein. So these are the best sources. Fresh garlic is the worst. Black garlic is better. Aged garlic extract is the best for dialyl disulfide. So you can either take a supplement or you can just eat it, right? Like you can eat that garlic. But again, the problem with garlic is you don't know how much you're actually getting off this dialyl disulfide. It's not standardized. So for example, if you go to Nootropics Depot and you buy their Tribulus Restus, it's standardized to 20% protodiosin. There is no garlic, as far as I know, in the market that is standardized for dialyl disulfide, which is the compound necessary to increase testosterone. So a few weeks ago, I decided to try this onion and the garlic experiment because both onions and garlic can increase testosterone. So I thought I was just going to combine it all, do it for two weeks, test my LH and my testosterone to see if it can actually increase your testosterone. So the conundrum is to eat a massive amount of this without dying. And so first of all, I thought, okay, I'm going to buy the sweet onions and I'm going to juice it. I'm going to drink the juice. Turns out it was still burning the heebie-jeebies out of me, so I was not able to do that. Then I thought, okay, I'm going to fry it. Maybe I was going to put it on the grill because that tastes quite good. I ate, I don't know, three, four halves, like two onions, basically, and I was turning into a fart machine. So, okay, I, I got to get rid of the, the fiber. So I started juicing them again and then boiling the fiber and then taking the garlic cloves and boiling the garlic cloves in the onion juice and that worked very well because that reduces the excessive pungentness of the garlic and it reduces the burning of the onion juice as well and also when you heat garlic the dialyl disulfide content increases so it was not destroying any of the beneficial compounds so i was trying that for in terms of quantities i was having i was juicing six onions per day and i was adding about one and a half garlic bulbs right like the full bulbs not just the cloves of garlic into it but i could only do this experiment for three days because i was turning into a fierce fart machine it was insane it wasn't just you're just gassy no it was like extremely pungent very you cannot live with me i was almost considering moving into the flat because it was so extreme with all of this flatulence <laughs> my wife was even waking up with migraines this is how bad it was so i was like okay i'm gonna stop it so even if it works i'm not gonna do it because it's i just can't do it the bloating the gas it was just insane so I, I quit the experiment and even if it does i would not know if it actually increases my testosterone but i found another dialyl disulfide compound that i'm gonna supplement but that is for another video so if you would like to be a part of all of my experiments, please join the Tesla Tribe. Link is in the description below. This is where low testosterone goes to die. All of my courses on there, how to maximize testosterone, DHT, plactin, estrogen, free testosterone, etc., etc. Everything's on there. Also, when you join, you get a free personalization call with me so I can dial in your protocol so you can get high testosterone as well, regardless of the cause of low testosterone. So if it's micronutrients, gut health, sleeping problems, whatever the case may be, we optimize all aspects of health so you can get high testosterone. So if you want to join the Test Tribe, links in the description below. All right, guys, so I hope you learned something new. Enjoy this video, and I will check you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.